Hello and welcome to the piping show from the National Piping Centre right here in Glasgow. Um, you'll notice that this week we've got a slightly different set. We are in the Highland Library of the National Piping Centre because we have a, an adult gathering school on this week and there's, there's music taking place all across the building. So we've found a quiet corner um, to bring you the show this week and I'm really excited to be chatting to Ailish Sutherland later in the show about her life and music and what she's doing here at the National Piping Centre and her own um, progress moving forward with her own music. So we're very much looking forward to that. If you like what you see and hear here, please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. It really does help getting piping out to a much wider audience. We'll be chatting to Ailish Sutherland later on the show, but just now we'll pass over to Helen Urquhart with this week's news. The Scottish Piping Society of London's annual contest took place last weekend. The Baratic Gorm was won by Bruce Gandy, and the overall winner was Fred Morrison. On Monday, the Hands Up for Trad Scots Trad Music Award nominations for 2022 were announced. We're delighted to say that Piping Live was nominated for Event of the Year, and the National Youth Pipe Band of Scotland are included in the Pipe Band of the Year category. Other categories include Gaelic Singer of the Year, Musician of the Year, and Music Tutor of the Year. You can vote now over at their website. The Scotland On Tour concert with Mary Campbell at the National Piping Centre this Thursday has been cancelled. Unfortunately, there's no history this week as Dr Bova is unwell. We hope he recovers and is back next week with more. So, Elish, uh, nice to see you. Um, we, I, I feel clever just sat in the library here <laughs> with all these books surrounding us and the Highland Library here at the National Piping Centre. Mm -hmm. um, and of course, you, you're in here all the time. You're, you're working here for us doing the youth development uh, lead and communities lead. But um, So thanks. Thanks for coming in for the chat. No I know you've been doing this job a few times, uh -huh. so it feels weird. Being on the other end of it. Yeah, um, yeah, totally. So, yeah, it's, it's great to see you. And I guess one thing I like to just ask everyone when they come in is, how did you get started in piping? What's, you know, from the very start, what what got you into it? Who got you into it? What, what kind of excited you and turned you into piping in the first place? Yeah, well, my my dad is a, a piper and he I, he, I guess it was sort of like in his mind that, that maybe one of his kids would be a piper as well. And I happened to be the first one to come along. And um, yeah, he he basically was always playing pipes in the house, um, sometimes till 11 o'clock at night. So it was I kind of difficult. <laughs> yeah, kind of difficult <laughs> to get away from it, I suppose. And then um, when I got to about, I think it was about six, we went along to the cowl uh, gathering. As a family, we went over in the ferry. We were living in Glasgow at the time. Went over in the ferry and I remember sitting up on the hill um, and just looking out at the mass band. And when they played, it was uh, Heel and Laddie once through that, that got me hooked, I have to yeah. say. Um, so that's good for the street cred. But uh, <laughs> yeah, it was like totally, it blew me away. And just that sound of it, eh? Yeah, yeah. And, and then I noticed once the, mar the march pass had March past had kind of dispersed. There were kids that weren't that much older than me coming off with their capes on and stuff. And I was just like, oh, well, maybe I could do something like that. And yeah, when we got home, um, we kind of discussed that I would, I would really like to, to learn properly. I had, I had the scale and maybe a couple of grace notes. And, and he was working in the ambulance service at the time in Glasgow. And because of a shift pattern, he was quite often in the house during my lunch break. So I would come home from school um, in Pollock Shields and get a wee lesson at the, the kitchen table. He'd make me a piece and it was all very wholesome. Uh, and just learn like Scott's way out the, the college piping yeah. tutor book. So yeah. that Sounds was very similar. Right. So uh, did you take to that quite easily? Because I'm, I, I've kind of tried teaching my sons at varying levels and that whole kind of initial relationship can be quite difficult. And I remember it with my own dad, like, you know, I kind of resented it at times as well. I loved the sound of it, but 
because it was him telling me, sometimes I kind of rebelled against it. Were you always kind of quite keen on it? Or? I think, um, yeah, I that kind of relationship change does resonate with me a bit because, like, pretty much all the way through my childhood, I just, like, Dad was, like, the best guy ever. And when he started teaching me, obviously, like, it becomes less, like, you're just, like, getting the crack and it's, like, right, you need to make sure you're not getting a crossing noise there. Um, and, yeah, it, it does take a lot of patience, I think, more from the teacher than it does from the kid. Because you're just a kid who's, like, acting out at <sighs> not wanting to sit there. And, that, like, there were times when mum's just like, I think maybe we just need to put the brakes on this for ten minutes and come <laughs> back to it. Um, because I think, for him, he was seeing the potential. And, like, he... He, he very much was, like, thinking about the process of teaching. Both of his parents were teachers, and he he sort of was very passionate that whatever I did was correct and that I, I enjoyed myself. So he never pushed me too hard, but he was... He didn't let me away with anything that yeah. wasn't right. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it was a very... Initially, quite a funny thing to navigate, um, yeah. having your father as this guy who's great crack and then or like takes you to the park and rides the bikes and then this guy who's like being super pedantic about the D Grace note and stuff. So yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it's a funny thing, isn't it? So that was um that was what kind of age were you then? I was about six when I yeah. when I learnt the scale and a few grace notes and I would say I was about eight before I actually properly had the attention span to sit down and, and learn properly. So what was next after that then? So it was lessons with your dad at the, the kitchen table over yeah. a piece. Mm -hmm. Where and did then, I go from there? Well, then we moved away from Glasgow. We moved to a, a wee place called Kitty Muir near Forfar. And at that point, um, there was a, a pipe band in Brechin. And we knew a couple, well, dad knew a couple of people from his kind of past pipe band uh, career. And he started taking me along to the grade four band. And I was really lucky at that time because there was a girl called Laura Nicholl who was the same age as me. She was learning the chanter too. And then we ended up getting our pipes on the same night as well. So it was good to have that balance between, you had like a formal lesson at home and then there was other, other people. Craig Black was the pipe major. He now plays with the, the Fife Police Band. And in fact, David Wilton was in the band he was growing up um, at that time in the Brechin band and now he is his pipe major so it's quite a funny <laughs> a funny thing to shift as yeah. well but um, yeah I think that was a really cool thing to get involved with a pipe band in grade 4A and then the band got promoted to grade 3B and then they got promoted to grade 3A uh, in consecutive years so I really was growing with the band and it was it was such an exciting time. I think yeah. we ended up getting like the best pipe core in grade three at the Worlds, but the drummers I think were like twentieth, so we didn't get any prizes. But yeah, the drummers always get the, yeah. the blame. But yeah, I know, I know. So then, um, were you doing solo stuff at all at that time, or a wee bit? And I, I kind of I wasn't forced to do any solos. Um, I think there were there was like gentle encouragement to try it out, but. Um, I did a couple of things, mostly indoors. And then maybe when I got to about 14, 15, I started like competing properly. Um, at like the Vale solos and like the branch solos and stuff and, and doing quite well with like March Trispies and Reels. Yeah. And of course you ended up, you played with Shots and Dykehead mm -hmm. as well, yeah? Yeah. How did you get into that? Um, well, I think I would have to say that the National Youth Pipe Band was the main stepping stone so once we got promoted to 3a in Brechin we kind of stayed there for about six years and the youth band provided that kind of stepping stone where you're being really really challenged with the repertoire and your your pipes had to be good they had to last for a full weekend and um yeah there were there were pipe majors and stuff coming in to do workshops and um, of course, you were kind of mixing with people on a national level as well. Yeah. Um, and it ended up, I think, with that pipe where I played in with shots, there were like seven of us that all 
came out of the youth band, I think. So that's great. Um, yeah. yeah, that that was the main the main. Brilliant. Stone. And you also play flute and, and whistle and small pipes. Mm -hmm. So I guess and you ended up you went to UHI, I believe. Yeah. So what what was the kind of how, how did that all happen and how did you find all that process? Well, it was a, it was a funny one because I'd left school, I'd finished my sixth year, and. I didn't have any desire at all to go into higher education. It was like, not for me at all. And I'd just been kind of, my life was playing the playing the practice chanter and the pipes and going to band, which I think maybe wasn't a lot of kind of 17, 18 year olds lives at the time. But I, I really, it was becoming quite clear that I didn't want to do anything else other than play the pipes or folk music. And one day I'd reactivated my Twitter out of the blue and the first tweet that came up was about the the Cayley Trail. Faith and then Gail had, had this advert put out just like that day. So it was kind of like a fate moment. And I, I clicked on the link, it was like, are you 16 to 25? Do you play folk music? Do you want a summer job? And I was like, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> so um, it, I ended up, the closest one to me was the Cairngorms Cayley Trail. Went and did that. There were eight of us on tour um, for three weeks in the summer and there was a wee winter tour. And after that, a lot of people who were at the Plockton Music School, they were thinking about what they were going to do next. And there was quite a few of us were keen to go and do the Bimbecula course at UHI. So, yeah, I, I put my name down on UCAS I did my audition actually in here in the Collinson room during Celtic Connections. Yeah. Met Anna Wendy and Mark Sheridan and yeah, just started that summer. And I, I did the first year from home, the second year in Glasgow, and then for the last two years moved to South East. Mm -hmm. And it was just like game changer. Yeah. I, I just Must have been, it's a great course that I think that you know there's there's so many really cool elements to it and I guess you get to meet and play with so many brilliant players and I remember myself and when you're exposed to that breadth of of musicians and approaches to music I think it, it does like as you say it's a game changer isn't it you know and, and I had a very similar path you know growing up pipe band and kind of that and then all of a sudden you've got a whole world of of different music and different approaches mm -hmm. that you're kind of immersed in it's, yeah it's a great great course for that well yeah like the the actual course itself is multi-genre so and it's not even a performance course necessarily it's just like applied music you can really make it what you want and the traditional music side of it if all the students are enrolled through the Bimbecula college and yeah the, the cool thing about moving to Uist was that I had the opportunity to get flute lessons and repertoire classes with Ian McDonald and yep. I think that kind of like a piper who's maybe grown up with a more kind of like formal military um, piping upbringing, who then totally just like learnt all the tunes of like yeah. everywhere, Cape Breton, Ireland, Scotland and and toured the world. The, the experience that he has is, is oh, amazing. Me and, yeah, no. and you know, like you would go in for an hour lesson and come out three hours later with like 10 tunes and a load of stories and Brilliant, eh? really what an experience yeah. mm -hmm. um, so moving on to kind of more current things um, you've been um, doing a brilliant job here at the, the National Piping Centre with well, the you. youth and communities <laughs> kind of development role so um, do you want to talk about that what, what you've kind of what you've introduced and how you've how you've gone about it and what opportunities might be there for for young and kind of up-and-coming pipers and people who might want to start learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I think I think that transition between um, school and university was such a big thing for me, and I felt like I was very lucky about where I was living at the time that there was the the opportunity to go and do lots of different things. And I was thinking during the pandemic actually about that age group of kids who have maybe just got onto the pipes and then there was nothing and I, I was really passionate that there were kind of development opportunities for pipers who are about 12, 13, 14 um, to, to learn the pipes and get exposure to all the different types of piping as well. So we've got the, the junior gatherings that 
we've got two weeks in the summer, one in August and one in uh, kind of April time, where, you know, young teenagers can get the opportunity to come in and get really intensive days of teaching and get access to people who play in the highest level of solo and band competition, but also who tour and gig and, um, yeah, that I think that's a really, really cool thing to be working on um, because I'm basically getting the opportunity to program what they get to learn. And I'm very much thinking about what would I have wanted to do. Yeah. Um, and then there's the, the weekend classes as well, Saturday mornings. We're, we're trying to get a, a kind of all the way through program from complete beginners to people developing at the, the highest level as well. Um, so yeah, but those are the main kind of things, but there are also other projects that I've been thinking about and that we've been chatting about yep. that I'm really excited about. Some yep, some very exciting things. Community Coming stuff, up in the yeah. community stuff, yep. And if anyone does want information on that, it's on the Piping Centre website yep. um, for all the, all the kind of junior stuff that we're doing. And back to kind of your own path and your own music, um, you've obviously been doing lots of work and playing at different festivals, making albums, mm -hmm. you know, living a great musical life. And I believe... Congratulations are in order because you're <laughs> taking part in the Young Traditional Musician of the Year right, competition yeah. and you've just, I believe, um, got into the final. Yeah. Which is going to be at Celtic Connections. So, yeah. congratulations on that. And Thank you. how are you feeling about it? I'm feeling good. I, I've sort of watched the competition for years and I've always said that if I felt like there was something I wanted to offer, um, I would go in for it. Um, just the once, so this is the, the the last year that I'm able to do it and I'm going to be competing in the final on my birthday, Aww. which is the last day of Celtic Connections there too, so yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm really <laughs> looking forward to it and it was a really lovely experience at the, the semi-final. Everyone was so nice and yeah. just like really well looked after and really nice atmosphere, so. I think yeah. it's brilliant and maybe it's because it's kind of multi-instrumental or uh, and vocal, but that you know, it's essentially a competition, and you've done it, I've never been a part of it, but I guess it felt maybe very different than a piping competition. Oh, so It's like different. such a different, and everyone I've spoken to, and I've, I've kind of helped out on and judging and various things on it over the years, but I think it does seem like a really, like, <laughs> a non-competitive competition, if, if that makes any sense, but yeah. everyone really has got a great spirit in it, and if you know, if they get through or they don't, then there, there is really still a, a very much kind of positive experience comes from that. And I guess it shows how competition can be such a positive um, medium for, for our music. Yeah. Well, I think what what's different about it is that, of course, there's the, the competitive element of it. But it is like we were all saying in the dressing room, it's like apples and oranges. Like, how can you really compare a a sort of like trad piano player with a, a piper. Like the disciplines are so, so different. The, the instruments as well are just have such different dynamic ranges anyway. But then you've got this thing that it feels like a gig as well, but it also feels like you're making a TV programme. So I think the, the just like everyone's feeling that pressure of like, this is a bit of a, a funny environment to be in. So it takes the heat off all of those things and you're just sort of like going through the motions a wee bit. So yeah, I think I think also that it is televised and it is broadcast um, and it, it is kind of seen as a bit of a, a national thing that at any level of it, you're you're getting a platform to play on. And I think you, you just feel like at any stage, if you were to go out of the competition, it's like, it's still worth doing it. Yeah. So yeah, great. that's really, really good. No, that's great. And um, you know, fair play to Simon and all the, Hands up to trad guys that are pulling that together. It's a, a great a great competition. So I guess that's us really. It's been a, a real yeah. pleasure chatting to you. Yeah. Um, how's it feel being on that side of the, the very, table this time? Very strange. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, good luck with everything you're doing here. Yeah, it, it really is great having you around. You're doing a, a brilliant job Thank and good you. luck with your final of the Young Traditional Musician of the Year. Thanks very much. On your birthday. Yeah, I know. <laughs> You're welcome to come along if you I'll want. I'll be there, yep, no bother. Thanks, Elish. Cheers, cheers.